Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on simulations. Our objective is to perform probability simulations to model real-world situations involving uncertainty. And if you were to scan the lesson and predict two things you'll learn about simulations, you might find how to model equally likely outcomes and also how to model equally unlikely outcomes. And for this lesson, we'll go right past the real world link on to our examples. Model equally likely outcomes. A simulation is an experiment to model the action in a given situation. Simulations often use models to act out an event that would be impractical to perform. So our first guided example. A cereal company is placing one of eight different trading cards in its boxes of cereal. If each card is equally likely to appear in a box of cereal, describe a model that could be used to simulate the cards you would find in 15 boxes of cereal. Choose a method that has eight possible outcomes, such as tossing three coins. And you have eight different trading cards, so eight possible outcomes, and when you toss three coins, that would represent eight different outcomes. Each outcome could represent a different card. For example, all three coins landing heads up could simulate finding card one. Toss three coins to simulate the cards that might be in 15 boxes of cereal and repeat 15 times. So head 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 could be one, head head tail could be two, and so on. That's modeling an experiment. We're not actually asking you to do the experiment, but that could be an experiment that you could use to model this example. What about our got it question? A restaurant is giving away one of five different toys with its children meals. If the toys are given out randomly, describe a model that could be used to simulate which toys would be given with six children's meals. Well, unlike our eight trading cards, um, we don't have an easy uh, way for five. But what if we had a spinner and it had five equal sections numbered one to five. Could we spin that spinner say six times to model which toys would be given with the six meals? Sure. So we could write out use a spinner with five equal sections assigning each toy to a section. And that is important here, too. It's not just recognizing that, okay, I have five equal sections. It could be, you know, toy one goes with box one, toy two here in section two, toy three, toy four, toy, toy five, and so on. Then spin the spinner. We're going to say six times to match the six children's meals. And who knows? We could have a lot of twos, we could have a lot of threes, or it could be equally distributed. You don't know until you simulate it. Now in our second guided example, every student who volunteers at the concession stand during basketball games will receive a free school t-shirt. The t-shirts come in three different designs. Design a simulation that could be used to model the situation. 
Use your simulation to find how many times a student must volunteer in order to get all three t-shirts. Well, for our simulation, we could have a spinner that has three equal sections. Assign each section one of the t-shirts and spin the spinner until you land on each section. So we have the spinner here, and we spun it the first time I got a blue, spun it the second time I got a yellow, spun it a third time I got back to blue, we just need to spin it one more time and it ended up as a red. So based on this simulation, a student should volunteer four times in order to get all three t-shirts. Now do we got it? Mr. Chen must wear a dress shirt and a tie to work. Each day he picks one of his six ties at random. Design a simulation that could be used to model the situation. Use your simulation to find out how many days Mr. Chen must work in order to wear all of his ties. When I hear six, I think of a number cube. And so we could roll a number cube. It's a perfect six-sided object for these types of simulations. We could say each number represents a different tie. We would need to repeat the simulation until all ties were selected. And we're in luck that I have the experiment already done for us, where we have our six numbers on the dice. And the first time I rolled it, I got a two, then a four, then a four, then a three, a two, a five, a one, a three, a five, a three, and finally a six. So on my experiment, it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven days. to wear all six ties, at least for my simulation. You may have rolled the number cube six times and come up with something completely different. Now for modeling unequally likely outcomes, simulations can also be used to model events in which the outcomes are not equally likely. So, in our third guided example, there is a 60% chance of rain for each of the next two days. Describe a method you could use to find the experimental probability of having rain on both of the next two days. Well, if you were to place three red and two blue marbles in a bag, 60% or three-fifths of them would represent rain, 40% or two-fifths of them would represent no rain. Randomly pick one marble to simulate the first day, replace the marble and pick again to simulate the second day. Find the probability of rain on both days. Interesting. And if we actually look over at our stop and reflect question here, how could you simulate a 20% chance? Write your answer below. Well, what if in that bag we had, well, first off, 20% is 20 over 100. And so we could put 100 marbles in a bag, but that's not very realistic either. This simplifies to 2 tenths, which is 1 Fifth. So if we put in one red marble to represent the 20%, and the other four fifths, the other four marbles could be blue. So that the one red would be rain, the four blue would be no rain, and you could run the same experiment that was run over here. Now, for our question, during the regular season, Jason made 80% of his free throws. 
describe an experiment to find the experimental probability of Jason making his next two free throws. What if we had a spinner? And this was divided into five sections, just like one of the other spinners we just used. And in theory, five equal sections. But four of those five sections represent his chance of making a free throw, since four-fifths is equal to 80%. So to write this out, we could say use a spinner in which 80% or 4 fifths, since they're again equivalent, represents making a free throw. Well, you would spin the spinner twice and see what you get. And that is it for this lesson on simulations. So you'll be modeling equally likely outcomes. You'll be modeling unequally likely outcomes. Sometimes you'll just be writing the simulation. Other times you'll be writing a simulation and performing it. Good luck.